So Donald Trump's close political advisor and ally, Steve Bannon, has been indicted and arrested for running a fraudulent We Build the Wall organization. Let's talk about that, because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So today, Steve Bannon, one of Donald Trump's senior advisors, um, someone who's often referred to as the architect of Donald Trump's 2016 uh, campaign for president, he was indicted and arrested for running a corrupt sham, we build the wall organization. He and three others, three co-conspirators, were indicted on two charges. One, conspiracy to commit money laundering, and two, conspiracy to commit wire fraud, essentially using the U.S. mails as part of their criminal scheme. They, um, in, in some of what we learned today, it looks like they bilked hundreds of thousands of donors, people who just wanted to build a wall, apparently, and give their money to that effort, even though we had been told all along Mexico was going to pay for it. Hundreds of thousands of donors that Steve Bannon and his co-conspirators bilked out of $25 million. So let's look at the press release that came out today from the Department of Justice, Southern District of New York, U.S. Attorney's Office, And that press release says in part the following. Not only did they, Bannon and his co-conspirators, lie to donors, they schemed to hide their misappropriation of funds by creating sham invoices and accounts to launder donations and cover up their crimes, showing no regard for the law or the truth. The press release continues. They used shell companies. They used sham vendors. They used fake invoices in their efforts to steal these donations. Let's talk about some of the details. So first of all, in white collar crime cases and fraud cases where there's no sort of violent crime that is alleged as part of the conspiracy, often defendants are allowed to self-surrender, to turn themselves in. So what happens sometimes is prosecutors will negotiate with the attorneys for the defendant, Bannon and others, and arrange for a time for them to turn themselves into the FBI, fingerprints, mugshots, and then they are presented in court. That's not the way these arrests went down. These four men were arrested unawares, as we say. I think two were in Florida, one in Colorado. (laughs) Steve Bannon, of course, was on a $35 million 150-foot yacht off the coast of Connecticut when he was plucked off that boat and um, arrested. Probably really cramped his vacation style. So let's talk about some of the big questions that we are now going to be discussing day after day as this case unfolds. One of the big ticket questions, will Steve Bannon flip? Will he cooperate? Will he plead guilty and tell the prosecutors in the Southern District of New York everything he knows about the criminal conduct of others? Not only his three co-conspirators in this case, but who else might he know was involved in criminal offenses, shady deals? Another thing is, because there are four defendants charged in this case, um, I suspect we will now see what we, what we often refer to as the race to the courthouse or the race to the prosecutor's office. Why do I say that? When we arrest and charge multiple conspirators, co-conspirators, all at the same time, often the co-conspirator who gets to the prosecution office first agrees to plead guilty, agrees to provide truthful information about what was going on inside that conspiracy and any other information about crimes being committed 
that that co-conspirator might know about. It's not limited to this charged conspiracy. The first one to enter into a deal might get the best deal, the best plea offer, the best sentencing request or sentencing cap limiting their sentence moving forward. And the reason for that is obvious. One, once one of the co-conspirators tells the prosecutors what's going on in that conspiracy, you know, who is guilty of what, who played what roles, well then the value of the other co-conspirators information begins to decrease. Prosecutors no longer necessarily need additional cooperating witnesses to talk about the conspiracy. So the question becomes, will Steve Bannon strike the first deal? Or will one of the other three defendants strike the first deal and implicate Bannon and put more pressure on Bannon? And frankly, we don't know what these other three men, Steve Bannon's co-conspirators know. We don't know what they know about uh, potential crimes outside the conspiracy. But we sure know Steve Bannon knows where the bodies are buried figuratively, right? When it comes to Trump and his administration and his family members. Steve Bannon had an office in the White House during the early stages of Donald Trump's tenure as president. He knows where the bodies are buried, figuratively speaking. Other big ticket questions. What's Bill Barr's role in all of this? Of course, it's the Southern District of New York U.S. Attorney's Office that prosecuted Michael Cohen and that's looking at Deutsche Bank and a number of other things, Lev and Igor and Rudy Giuliani, right? Investigating or prosecuting all of those cases. So Bill Barr, of course, as the Attorney General, is in charge of all 94 U.S. Attorney's Offices, including the Southern District of New York. What was his role in all of this? Was he fully apprised of these indictments and did he approve them? Or might he have been walled off if he had some kind of a conflict? I'm not saying he did, but you know, if somebody has a conflict in a particular case, a prosecutor, then what we as prosecutors do is we wall that person off and they take no part in the investigation or in the prosecutorial decisions about a case. We have no idea what Bill Barr's role has been thus far, and we don't know what his view of this will be moving forward. But when it comes to Steve Bannon, don't we have to ask ourselves the question, will he decline to flip? Will he decline to provide information about the president and instead play for a pardon? You know, will he join Team Roger Stone and Team Mike Flynn and you know, remain part of that dirty cabal, waiting for his corrupt pardon to be delivered by Donald Trump. You know, there are so many developments that are going to be of keen interest to us and to the White House. One other thing, Donald Trump has already run to the cameras today, and what has he said? He said, I didn't know anything about this. I was half expecting him to say that Steve Bannon was a coffee boy or maybe he never met him. But he said, I, yeah, I didn't have any part in this, you know, we build the wall organization and I thought it was a bad idea. We're going to learn that there are things Donald Trump said and did that contradict that. But here's what I love. He started accusing Steve Bannon of showboating. Yeah, whatever he was doing with that We Build a Wall organization, that was just Steve Bannon showboating. You know, nobody will ever accuse Donald Trump of making sound tactical decisions. Think about it. He is now antagonizing needlessly Steve Bannon, you know, criticizing him and accusing him of showboating when Steve Bannon is going to have a decision to make. Do I cooperate with the prosecutors and tell them the truth about everything I know about Donald Trump? Or do I hold fast and wait for my corrupt pardon? So I don't think Donald Trump antagonizing Steve Bannon is necessarily the right tactical play. But, you know, the only ideas Donald Trump has are bad ideas. You know, if other people 
are playing three-dimensional chess, Donald Trump is scratching out tic-tac-toe boards on butcher paper. And can I say one more thing, folks? I think it qualifies as sweet irony that Steve Bannon famously said, I'm here to deconstruct the federal government and I'm helping Donald Trump get elected so he can deconstruct the federal government. It's my federal government too and I take offense at that, but that was Steve Bannon's announced mission to deconstruct our government. Well, he didn't do such a good job at deconstructing the Department of Justice or the Southern District of New York U.S. Attorney's Office because they got him. Now, an indictment is just an accusation, right? It doesn't conclusively prove that he committed these crimes. In fact, when and if Steve Bannon goes to trial, he will enjoy a presumption of innocence and the presiding judge will instruct the jury that they must view Steve Bannon as innocent. They must presume him to be not guilty of this crime unless and until the government proves his guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. But boy, when you read that 26 page indictment and all of the evidence that supports it, it sure looks like the Southern District of New York U.S. Attorney's Office got him. Stay tuned, folks. And as always, stay safe. I'll talk with you soon.